Okay, thank you, and good morning, everybody. So the, uh, this presentation will have two parts. One actually will be in from the lady who's done the paleographical studies and the part which is came from computer science, which is our Hello, present. Hello, so my can name you is Daria. Okay. <laughs> run the video. It's not running. Our ongoing project is a joint project of the Ben Gurion University of the Negev, of the Open University of Israel, and of Shamun College of Engineering. We combine polyography and deep machine learning, and currently we are studying medieval Hebrew manuscripts. And we are building fully automatic tools to recognize uh, script types and modes for medieval Hebrew manuscripts, to date uh, the undated manuscripts, and to recognize the region where the manuscripts were copied. Now, why is this so important and why deep learning is so efficient? We know that there are already very big collections of digitized medieval manuscripts in different libraries in the world, and potentially, this promises new perspectives of research. But to use uh, those new opportunities, we need tools. And these tools must help us to, to search, to analyze, to pre-process uh, those digitized images. Deep machine learning is a very efficient tool that allows to categorize, to analyze, big amounts of complicated data. For example, uh, these types and modes of medieval Hebrew manuscripts, most of those types and modes are now extinct. Uh, and some of them are hard to read for today's user, and some of them are unreadable for unprepared user. However, uh, deep machine learning algorithms successfully um, successfully uh, help us to uh, recognize which, for example, which script, which mode of a script um, is on this, on that part uh, of a page. And these are very important advancements. Uh, my colleague now will speak about the methods we are using and the results that we have achieved. Thank you. So uh, again, good morning. People from humanities like to talk and people from computer science like to present slides. So I'll start with the slides. Actually, this ongoing project, there is a big data. It was classified and prepared almost over 40, more than 40 years by Professor Malachi Betarie concern Hebrew biography. And it's actually stored in the Hebrew National University in Israel National University called this far data. So he took samples of manuscript and classify them into various types. So in his classification, he's actually have these types of scripts, of the Hebrew script, and they, then from each, some of them have the square letters, and some of them have the cursive, some of them has the, a, uh, the, a, uh, the kind of in between, the semi-cursive. Now the idea to automatically classify a given document into one of these classes, so in the beginning, I would like to explain kind of a little bit background about classification in computer science. So we give a, what we call a patch from a document. We don't extract like letters more complicated. We take a small patch, usually 250 by 250 pixels, and we want to classify them. So if I have three types, I will do a mapping from this patch I will represent it as kind of class one, two, or three. Sorry, there is a type which should be two, three. And the idea that you want this mapping, that I will give this document an ID one, this is I'll give two, and so on. This is we call a, a, a supervised learning. And in this case, I need to prepare a lot of data. 
and for each document, I'll give it the appropriate label. This was actually done with the SFAR data, which was good that we have done a lot of work in supervised learning. The unsupervised learning is actually, we have a document and we don't know exactly these classes. We want to map them into what we called embedding space. And the, in the embedding space, we hope if the mapping is good and we are lucky, they will be separated into groups and then we can classify them. Now, how we do this in computer science, actually there is two steps. One is the first step we do feature extraction. Usually it's done by a models like convolution neural network and other models. And then following we have a classifier. The classifiers could be k-means or could be neural network, whatever. And eventually, in the training, I will tell this document belongs to class one, this document belongs to class two, and this document belongs to class three. And in the unclassified, we don't know this information. And now it's actually the big question, how we train such a machine and how we train this. So the main idea, we have a model that we only, we know now why we wanted to do unsupervised classification we realized that we were not able to get very high accuracy with the data set of the corpus of the SFAR data. And we actually hypothesized that there are some manuscripts that was not accurately actually classified. I cannot dare to see this in front of Malachi, but here I can see it. And, and this is why I say, okay, let us now try to do unsupervised classification. And the main idea we take one, like from the same document, we say we have two patches from the same document, and we say these two belong to the same, to the same, a, uh, to the same, a, uh, to the same class. This is all what we know. And then the same class, we have this kind of vector representation that will tell us like these two coming from the same class. Now in this model, the CMEs neural network, we have two branches that actually exactly similar to this, but we have to one branch and another, we fit two batches, one to each one, and then do the classification in the end. And after the training, like if they came from the same manuscript, they will have, yes, they belong to the same manuscript. If they came from different manuscript, we'll say they don't belong to the same manuscript. And then we take this branch that we trained here, and then this is will create a vector that actually create the classification. And after this mapping to this domain, what, what we call it the latent space, we can do a classification. And we can play with many algorithms. Now, why we, we need to use patches and not pages? And because the data set we have is we don't want to deal with very large data sets. So we have in the training data, we have a, here is what we have the number of pages, and we distinguish between two kinds of training. One we call typical training test, and this is what we do in general in computer science. We have all the patches we collected. We take one portion and say, this is we will use for training. We take another portion we use for testing, and then we train the machine in, uh, test it in the training and test it on the testing. Now, this is a little bit kind of inaccurate because the machine will learn the patches, because it could be that two patches, one in the training set and another in the test set, came from the same manuscript, even from the same page. So practically the, mo the machine has seen such a patch and, we, and, and it may memorize this, will not generalize. So the main idea in order to check this kind of how it will generalize, we take several manuscripts and first of all say, these manuscripts will use for training, and these manuscripts will use for testing. That means no patch will be used in the testing that have, like this, has been seen by the model. And this is what we call the blind test set, the, which is a manuscript that have not been seen by the machine at all. And this is why we see the, the results here. Just I will not go over the results and the analysis, and we want to do the classification of the results then by, first of all, we know the data set we test on the blind set, but we also want to test the mapping. So this is just a chart to show that various kind of backbone, backbone machines that how 
they perform in this data set. And uh, how am I time? One minute. Okay, so this is, and now if we are looking at this like kind of like a confusion matrix, we can analyze and see which actually manuscript are close by each other and which one are different. And we realize that, for example, Italian and Ashkenazi, which makes sense, are very close and it could be, some of them could be confused by each other. So just like to a, um, why this is kind of work in order to detect the, the mode and the style of manuscript is very important. It's very important for historical reason. One, in order to be, to track the movement of various communities could be Jewish in this case because of the Hebrew from like different part of the world to see what really triggered that movement. This is, would be one example to see interaction between communities, for example, in Baghdad and in Cairo. They do have some interaction, for example. We see some on the a Cairo Geniza kind of like scripts that came from different region or from Yemen, for example. And why kind of like computerized tool is very important. It's actually very important because Hebrew language is, is spoken by a very small community. It's also the number of experts in this domain is very small. And the ability to be able to query a document just like automatically and give paleographic information about manuscripts definitely of a great values for historians, for language, a, uh, for language researchers, and I think for many uh, people from humanities uh, and, uh, and liberal art. This is just like uh, about the machine, kind of the design of the architecture of the, I don't think it's that, uh, I don't know. It, maybe it's kind of, it's, it's very important, but maybe it's uh, not really for the sake of this talk. And the, uh, I'll just uh, stick with this model set. So this is pretty much my talk and thank you for listening.